Hey, I'm Chris Atkins for Highland Woodworking, and today we're going to be talking about the Coons Plus hand plane. In front of me, I've got four Coons Plus hand planes. You've got the number six four plane, you've got the number five jack plane, and you've got a four and a three smoother plane. Uh, this body of planes right here is going to do a lot of work for you, uh, whether it be joining, rough work, or once you get down to some smoothing operations. The Kunz Plus is a German manufactured plane. Uh, the overall quality of this plane is exceptional. Uh, I was very pleased with taking a look uh, at the flatness of the bottom, uh, the squareness of the sides in contrast to the bottom of the plane, and just the overall uh, fit of all the parts. Uh, everything's very tight, all the parts are well fit together, um, just a very well made plane. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is uh, take the plane out of the box, uh, open it up, and on the inside you can see uh, you've got two different things. You've got the plane that's wrapped in uh, plastic, and you've got an Allen key that's used for uh, moving all the parts. The plane itself is wrapped in this protective plastic and the, also the plane has a coat of, of grease on it that uh, keeps it protected while it's in storage and shipping to keep any from uh, corrosion getting on it. Alright, as you can see the plane straight out of the box is completely assembled. Everything's all put together and ready to go. But there are a few things we need to do before we get started on it. First thing we're going to do is take the plane apart and go ahead and clean all of that packing grease off of it. And there's not a lot, it's just kind of a light coating on it. So the way I like to handle that is just take a rag uh, with some mineral spirits on it and just wipe everything down. But first let's take it apart. So the first thing we want to do is take this brass knob and unscrew that so that we can remove the lever cap. Next, we're going to pull the iron and the chip breaker out, and they just lift right out. Set those to the side. All right, next thing we want to do is remove the frog, and that's where the Allen head comes into place. Now, you'll notice that as you're taking the frog loose that they're not that tight. The, the two Allen screws that hold the, the frog down are fairly loose, um, and there's a reason for that. Uh, this frog is actually made to be able to adjust with the plane completely put together. So if, if we tighten these down all the way, it would put too much friction on the frog against the, the, the body and it wouldn't, wouldn't move. But with them just snug down, there's an Allen head that's locked between uh, some little brads on the back that allow you to, to have some friction movement there. All right, so the next thing we want to do is just clean everything up. And as I mentioned before, uh, the way I like to do that is just with just a clean rag with some mineral spirits on it. So I've already got some mineral spirits on here. We're just going to wipe everything down. We're going to wipe the frog down, get any of that packing grease off of that. Alright, so now that we've got everything cleaned up, uh, the next thing we're going to do is need to put a coat of oil on the plane. Um, this is going to help to protect and prevent any kind of corrosion from moisture and any rust. Um, I like to use camellia oil. There's a lot of different options you can, you can use out there, so uh, really it's just personal preference. Uh, but we want to make sure that we kind of get everything wiped down and get a nice even coat uh, throughout the whole plane and all the parts on it. And once again, we're just going to go through and wipe everything down, just real light coat. All right, now that all the packing grease has been cleaned, everything is oiled up, uh, we're almost ready to put this back together. But before we do that, I want to do one more step to go ahead and get the, the plane ready for, for use. Um, now, the, the plane iron, when it comes, uh, it's sharp. I mean, they've already sharpened the plain iron and it's got a pretty good edge on it. Um, however, just personal preference on and just kind of recommendation on any plane when you buy, uh, no matter what, I like to go ahead and just do a honing of that edge on it just to make sure that you've got a real nice honed edge so that when you're taking those first shavings, you're, you're really getting, 
getting some nice cuttings. So let's take this uh, iron and do just a honing on this front edge of it. All right, so the first thing I want to do is when I check this iron out, the bevel on this, the primary bevel on this iron is at 25 degrees. Um, and if I look really close, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, there's a slight, uh, there's definitely a little shine on the edge. Uh, makes it look like there's probably a little bit of a uh, secondary bevel on that, a micro bevel. So what I want to do is, so I set this up to where I've got a 25 uh, degree as my primarily, but since the only thing I'm going to do is be honing this and just making sure this, this edge right here is, is nice and honed, is I set this to 27 degrees and I'll just check that and make sure that that's going to catch everything. So. Uh, right now I've got it on a 4,000 grit stone. All right, and if I look at that, it looks like that took it all the way up to that edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this stone over, and this is an 8,000 on the other side. And this is a water stone, so this stone has been soaked uh, for quite a while, so it's, it's pretty saturated. Um, Normally, if I'm going through a whole sharpening process, I'll keep a uh, spray bottle here just to keep it wet down. But for a quick operation like this, I'm just kind of hitting it. So we're going to do the same thing at that 27 degree micro bevel. All right, so if we take a look, we've got a nice, nice shiny edge right down there just on that tip it's going to give us a nice smooth cut now now that we've done that there's a very very slight burr on the back side back here so the way they're going to knock that off there is the back of this has already been flattened um, but but we want to just take that burr off and one of the, the ways I find it's best to take that burr is just uh, take a ruler lay the ruler down on the edge lay the iron on it and just kind of run this back and forth just a couple of times. All right, now it's time to put everything back together. First thing we want to do is take the body of the plane and we're going to put the frog back in. Now on the back of the frog there is an Allen screw on the back and that Allen screw is going to fit into, uh, there's four posts that's, that's in here in the body and that Allen screw is, is basically captured between that. So when the frog goes in place, we want to make sure that, that Allen screw sits right in there. Now the advantage of this is, is once the, the frog is screwed down, it's, it's only tightened to the point where it's not going to move around and, and wiggle in there, but it's, it's tight enough to where it's still going to allow some movement. Uh, the big thing about being able to move the frog back and forth is, is we can adjust the mouth um, of the plane, we can go ahead and tighten that down if we're if we're wanting a you know a closer or, or further away, depending on what we're doing. If we're doing more of a smoothing operations where we're really trying to get a good fine fine cut, then we want to have that throat really tight. Um, whereas if you're using it for a little bit rougher work, then you're going to open that throat up to allow a little bit thicker shavings to come through. All right, with the frog in place, we're going to install the Norris style adjuster and it just fits right in. There's a hole up in the front here and on the back of this it just has a prong that just fits right in place. And you want to make sure that on the the top of the adjuster that that you have the top piece with the hole in it that's going to be facing up. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the iron and the chip breaker together. Um, when you're putting these two together one thing to keep in mind is that the chip breaker, the purpose of that is so that when the iron is cutting that it's, it's catching the wood and it's shearing the wood off and the chip breaker is supposed to catch that chip and just kind of break it off. So you really want to have that chip breaker pretty close to that front edge. Um, I, I probably keep mine anywhere from a 32nd to a 64th, um, fairly close. Take the screw on the back side. Tighten that down. Now as you're tightening that down just make sure that you come back once you get it snug 
come back here and check this for fit because the last thing you want to do is have that chip breaker actually going over that cut edge. The screw on the back of the iron and chip breaker, the head of that is going to fit into the hole on that North Style adjuster. It's worth mentioning here that this lineup of planes are all beveled down planes, which means that when the plane is installed in the body, the bevel is facing downward, uh, which is normal for a standard uh, bench plane. Uh, with the exception of that, most of the time you'll see in a block plane or a low angle, you'll typically have a bevel up. And next we're going to install the cap iron. Now when you're putting the cap iron on, uh, you, you may have to have some adjustment on the front screw down here just because that's going to be your, that's basically your leverage point. Uh, this brass screw has got a hole in it that actually fits over the end of the screw that goes through the chip breaker. So you just align that up. One of the things that I did find about this plane that's pretty interesting is because of the way the brass screw is threaded through the cap iron, it pulls the cap iron away, which puts pressure down here on the screw, which puts a lot of pressure down here against the, the bottom of the blade. Um, a lot of a lot of other systems, um, they're not the same way. It's really just clamping pressure and pushing down on it. This one really seems to put a lot of pressure with, with very little turning, I mean, which is going to make a nice secure um, fit. The, the tighter that's going to be at the bottom, the better because you're going to have less likelihood of chatter. All right, now that we've got the plane cleaned up, put back together, uh, blade honed, uh, next thing we're going to do is get started using it. Uh, first thing we want to do is set the iron uh, so that we can use it and the way I do that is we're going to slightly loosen this lever cap. You want a little bit of tension in there uh, and make sure that the that the blade um, is centered in the mouth down in the opening and then also the, the cap iron. Just make sure everything's centered on there. Put just enough tension on there to hold everything in place and then we're going to advance the iron forward by turning the, the knob, the North Style adjuster, we're going to turn that clockwise to get the blade to go forward. And we're just bringing it far forward enough to where it's just starting to protrude from the mouth. Um, a good way to do this is just to take a little scrap block of wood and run over the edge and then just start getting it to chip. Um, and once I get that blade to protrude just a fuzz, I'm going to tighten down just a little bit more just to keep that pretty, pretty steady in that position. All right, and with the iron protruding just a little bit, we're going to go ahead and give it a try and see how uh, where we're at. All right, with just a couple of passes, uh, the first thing I notice is that it's probably just a little light. Uh, it's not cutting quite as much, and all of our shavings are coming from the left side. So that means two things. Uh, I need to make the iron cut a little bit deeper. So I'm going to turn again clockwise, but just barely, just a little bit. And then second of all, I need to try to advance the blade down on the right side. And as I mentioned before, on this particular plane, the NAR style adjuster on that, um, we push the adjuster the direction that we want to move the iron. So if I want the iron to go that way to make it cut a little more on the right side, I push it the same direction. So we're going to push just a little. All right, now let's give that a try. A little more. Maybe too much. That may be just a little heavy. So. If, the, if you're a little too heavy on it, you want to turn counterclockwise. Now, you're going to notice as you start turning it counterclockwise that it's going to have a lot of slack to go all the way out. And you're going to have to back up through that slack and then go a little past what you think you're going to need to. Because you want to take it back forward clockwise again to engage to make sure that you pull that backlash out. Now I always like to keep just a little bit of wax laying around 
Um, there's a lot of people use a lot of different type waxes. I typically end up just using candle wax most of the time, but there's some, some really great waxes out there on the market. And just rub that just a little bit. I'm noticing that it's kind of sticking just a little. Now, as we're adjusting the iron down, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it's better to, especially if you're doing a smoothing operation, it's better to come down and, and keep it very light at first. Uh, a lot of times what you'll notice is, is that you'll think you've got too light of a cut to start with, and then as you start planing, the cut will start getting deeper. And there's a couple of reasons why that happens. Uh, primarily, it's, it's the, the, the grain. Once you're slicing off the high spots, then you start cutting deeper once you get through those high spots. Uh, second of all, it's just the plane starts warming up. As the uh, body warms up, everything kind of advances and it's going to make it cut a little more. So it's best just to kind of go a little bit shallow and then just see how it goes for a second. And as a final recap of these planes, you've got the number six four plane, which is a longer body plane that's going to be primarily used for joining and for flattening of work. You've got the number five jack plane, which is a medium body plane that's going to be a very versatile plane. Uh, this plane is going to do anything from roughing of stock uh, down to more of a smoothing finish. You've got the number four and the number three smoothing planes. And as the name indicates on these, the primary use of these planes is for smoothing and getting your projects ready for finish. Um, however, they can be used for a lot of different operations, uh, especially if you're, you're roughing out a smaller board. Uh, you may not want to go to one of the larger. You may come over to, to more something like a number four or maybe even number three. Uh, this body of planes is very versatile. Um, it will do a lot of work all the way from, from rough work to down to getting something ready for finish on it. Uh, another option that's available is there's a tooth blade that's available um, that will even increase the versatility of these even further. All right, so that about wraps it up. Um, once again, we have went through today uh, the cleanup, taking the plane apart, getting it ready for use, and then actually using it on a board here. Um, if you're looking for a premium plane that you're not necessarily wanting to spend top dollar on, uh, this may be the plane to go with. It's a fantastic plane that uh, works great. Mm -hmm.